I told you all Gojo was to you was f***ing Himothy Jenkins. What did I tell you? I told you all, right? I told you all, but you all refused to listen. Choo choo mother f it's Gojo hype train time. Oh boy! It is good to be a Jujutsu Kaisen fan. Good lord. I slept like a kid last night. Like a kid on Christmas Eve. If you were in the stream yesterday, you know just how excited I am for this chapter. And good lord, I was so ready for this bad boy. And oh my god, it lived up to every singular expectation that I had in my little tiny brain case right here. All I'm saying is that Gojo fans are eating incredibly good in this chapter. But without further ado, let's just dive into these, these leaks from Mayamura. Go and follow him on Twitter. Let's take a little sneak peek of the battle of the strongest. And also, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe because that always does help me out. So this chapter opens up with Gojo and Ichiji walking through what looks like Shibuya as there is no translations. So we'll keep the speculation and possible theory crafting to bare minimum because you know how I like to do things. I like to try and keep it until we get the official translations from either TCB or Viz and then we can start all the theory crafting and crazy crap or theories. But what we're going to see visually here, this actually looks like the meteor that Jogo saw against Sukuna way back when in Shibuya. Um, so that kind of looks around the area where they are right here. But Ichiji is apparently asking Gojo what it was actually like inside of the prison realm. Just something I genuinely was hoping that someone was going to ask him at some point along the line. And honestly, out of everyone to ask, I feel like it was either going to be Ichiji or Takaba to ask. Those two feel like the correct people to ask this type of question. Everyone else in the close friend circle feels like a type of thing. Okay, you're out. Are you okay? Good. Let's go back to business. You know what I mean? I'm not going to ask what it was like inside there. I know it was probably horrible, but Ichiji and Takaba feel like the type of person who'd be like, oh, what, uh... You know, the other skeletons in there? Were they chill or not, nah, bro? Like, But I am genuinely finally glad someone actually asked this question, but Gojo then tells Ichiji how it was basically just like having an extremely busy work week. It feels like super hella short, but also ridiculously long at the same time. And honestly, it have like props to Gege for having it explained in this way, rather than some form of mystical enlightenment. Um, I feel like him explaining it in such a mundane way actually really helps me relate to it because I know exactly what that feels like of having on like a ridiculously busy work week where like you wake up on Monday morning and then all of a sudden it's Friday but you know you are super tired and it feels such like long such a long week but also it's just like not you blinked and bam it was Friday all of a sudden so I understand that 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 explanation for me works perfectly fine for me but it turns out Gojo was actually also concerned about the people that were affected by the limitless void within Shibuya which again is a nice touch I think it helps nail home that he's actually not just this completely fucking unfeeling monster the way a lot of people have painted him. Yeah, we know he's a bit of a psychopath. We know this. Uh, but there is some sliver of humanity hiding within this absolute monstrous powerhouse. So yeah, I, I, I like that this is a nice touch. I like that this was included. But this is where we get to see Gaku Ganji and Utahimi here on top of a roof who are both preparing to actually help Gojo with his fight against Sukuna. And speaking of Sukuna, we actually get to see the main man himself who's on a building across the way here. It seemingly looks like across the city from Gojo, staring Gojo down. And the aura that Gojo is producing right now, the way that he is emitting this, it reminds me so much of Netero uh, from Hunter x Hunter. And hopefully that this fight does not go the same as the Meruem vs Netero, because we all know how that went. Uh, if you haven't already watched that, go watch that fight. Go actually go watch and read Hunter Hunter if you haven't done. Like, what the fuck are you doing with yourself? Go and go, go and educate yourself. Come on now. And for those of you wondering why the fuck Gaku Ganshi is still alive and kicking after killing Yaga, well, it actually turns out that Goto totally chill with him. Goto was like, talk about brother. Yeah, it's chill, brother. But it turns out Gaku Ganji actually spoke to Gojo about the whole thing. And Gojo actually blames himself for getting sealed. And he says how the higher ups probably forced Gaku to do this. So yeah, if you thought that we were going to get a few flashbacks this chapter, you were absolutely correct. And I, I theorized this as well. So for those of you who are absolutely terrified of Gege fumbling the bag and just fumbling the series at all, all I want to say is I fucking told you, you should always have faith in our goat goat gege sama that's how i'm gonna refer to him from now on it's no longer gege akatame it is goat gege sama that's how i'm referring to him from now on but this is where we get another massive massive reveal it turns out in the month passing that gojo had been actually ridiculously busy because if you guess that gojo had took any time out of his little busy days here to go and make all of the higher ups in the jujutsu kaisen society uh then you were incredibly correct incredibly uh from what i can tell at least it's seems Gojo has marked all of the higher-ups 
right now we get this little one panel still of all of these boys absolutely bloody bruised and simply unalive without further translations we don't have a proper confirmation of that that's just a summary from what we can see picture wise here and once we get the full translations we'll be able to dive into even further into the proper implications of this because this chapter right now is dropping a lot of big big shit right now and it's whoo, it is spicy so when these full translations come out we'll be able to properly dive into the implications of these higher-ups being absolutely murdered here because this tells us a lot about where gojo's mental state is right now where his mind is and it kind of leans back into that gojo rage slash monster theory but i'll be able to dive into that properly once we get the translations here but we get more flashbacks with gojo and ichiji again and gojo seemingly telling ichiji how he is the one who he trusts the most and honestly i half understand this because ichiji's always been there but also at the same time what the fuck about yuta or maki or any of his students you know like again this will be something that i can properly dissect when the full translations but good lord this chapter's a juicy one but this this statement kind of hit different a little bit because like everyone else has been there like fuck bro why why ichiji of all people again We'll just wait for the full translations, but I do want to say right now how I called having this fight take place with all these flashbacks to fill in the blanks. I literally said this on stream yesterday, how I would love to see this big drawn out fight with Gojo and Sukuna and mixed in between all the flashbacks of the month and just tying everything up in a neat bow, giving it really that emotional oomph uh, to really drive it home and nail it home for us. So I, yeah, I'm a big fan of the way that this is going right now. But moving further on into the chapter, we switch back over to the present and Gojo was on top of the building where we saw earlier and Ichiji was behind him setting up a barrier. As for what this barrier does, we do not know. Again, translation thing. But we do also get an Utahimi power reveal in this chapter. And it turns out Jujutsu Kaisen is really just Final Fantasy right here because because Utahimi is doing her best Yuna cosplay right here and is actually buffing the output of all sorcerers right now. And again, without translations, I'm sure there's probably a little nugget of information in there that holds up, really brings this home even more. But good lord, Gege is really in his bag right now. And I stand by what I say. I have complete note of faith in Gege to write the ending of the series, but I also stand in the, the belief of I don't think everyone's going to enjoy the ending of the series. But everyone here is using their techniques seemingly in unison. They are chanting and forming hand seals. And we get to see an immense amount of power forming and building up around Gojo here. And there is a lot of text and dialogue within these two pages here. And again, can't wait for the full translations. I, I keep nailing this home because, again, every fucking week, there is always, like, this absolute craziness, controversy about the leaks. And there's no translations. And people just go off the deep end. So I always try and nail it home in the videos. So please just fucking wait for the translations before you make your opinions. Obviously, we can see visually what's going on. But the, the, the text and the context of said text makes a fucking massive difference. But well, this is where we get to see Gojo preparing his signature hollow purple attack. And good fucking lord, it's a big boy. Like, in terms of hollow purples that we've seen in the past are nowhere even remotely close to this bugger that this dude is about to flick off his finger right now. Like, holy shit. This is apparently a 200% output hollow purple right now. And he fires this motherfucker at Sukuna, who is standing across the city here. And I just want to say how scared attack looks right now it is eviscerating the buildings in front of him literally wiping everything out it is tearing the area behind it black as if there was nothing there like space you are just looking at death right now sakuna like and he himself looks shook like in fact i would actually be inclined to say that this is the most serious face we have seen sakuna pull in the entire series there is no fucking about from him anymore he realizes right here and right now just who the fuck he's dealing with who the fuck he's about to fight right now and this attack lands and there is more dialogue from the narrator but again translation thing translation skill issue but the destruction that this attack attack causes is insane and i just want to point out here that sakuna does actually survive this attack and is sweating but his hand is gone and it is charred and burnt to a crispies right now it is gone oh uh which is actually the most damage we've seen Sukuna actually receive. Like, apart from the physical beating that Yuji gave him and the attack from Angel with Jacob's Ladder, this is actually the most damage Sukuna has taken. I mean, I know we, he used RCT against fucking Yorazu, but really, what was he healing there? A little booboo -boo on his knuckle or something? I don't understand that one. But this is genuinely... This is Sukuna missing a fucking limb. No one else has done this before. No one has done this to Sukuna. He is missing a fucking limb, okay? Take this as you want. Take this... Uh, power scalers go fucking crazy with this right now, but Sukuna is 
shooketh. He is shooketh right here. And it's looking like Gojo's battle plan, from what I can see here, is to whittle down Sukuna's cursed energy. And from what I can see and speculate right here, but like in terms of a war of attrition, if you're fighting Gojo, most people are just gonna fucking lose. He just nigh on infinite cursed energy, and cursed energy makes and breaks battles. Let's be real here. In almost all of the Jujutsu fights that we've seen, it almost always comes down to who can pull off the domain first, who can make it successful, or who runs out of cursed energy last. That's just normally how these battles go. Not all the time, obviously there's outliers in there, but you know what I'm saying? It generally makes the fucking difference when you're fighting someone with Gojo who is nigh unlimited or is close to zero energy cost on techniques as possible. Yeah, fighting someone like that in a war of attrition kind of makes it a little bit difficult. But Gojo appears in front of Sukuna here and he is vibing. He is chilling. He has not broken a singular sweat and I bet you any money there isn't an ounce of cursed energy that has been used properly. And I also want to point out that even though that hollow purple was a 200% attack, it wasn't a maximum output attack. I just want to nail that one home right now. 200% versus actually a maximum technique. Those are some big boy differences here. And considering we know just how powerful and how much cursed energy Gojo has, that maximum technique is going to hit different. Like, that could be city level Gonski's evaporate everything right now. But this man is in front of Sukuna and he just basically looks at Sukuna as like, you don't seem to understand. You're the challenger here. You are, you are fighting on my turf right here. You're the challenger here right now. Like, this chapter was so fucking good. This is everything that I wanted, bro. Like, the shit talk has begun. This chapter was everything that I'd hoped for. And I genuinely cannot lie. There were so many people who were concerned about the series after the last chapter. Even people talking about Gege rushing the series and all. But, and I've got a video coming on that because I really want to talk about that. I saw, a th I th saw a thread yesterday on Twitter that was really interesting and I want to dive into it. But, oh my god, bro. It's like Gege was seeing all this talk. I was like, hmm, yeah. Let me dispel all of that bullshit real fucking quick right now. Oh, man. I feel like a kid on Christmas, bro. I can't stop smiling thinking about this chapter. I'm actually probably just going to reread this shit. I can't wait for the translations to drop for this boy. Oh, my God. Jujutsu Kaisen fans right now, they're genuinely on top. Genuinely. Like, this manga is generational. What we are seeing right now is insane. Just think about when this anime drops. Think about how incredibly hyped this is all going to be generational stuff generational i genuinely can't get over how good this chapter was and that is everything from me in this video uh please be sure to like and subscribe if you have not already done those two things let me know what you thought of the spoilers and the video in the comments down below and as always i will catch you guys all in the next one much love big kisses peace